What's up guys, thanks for stopping by, I hope you're doing good. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best weapons to use in the Mistlands. In this video, we're going to be focused on all the stuff that you can get before entering the biome, instead of the stuff that you need to grind the Mistlands to get. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we're going to go through my inventory and explain why I'm going to use each item, just really briefly. And then we'll clear a dungeon to show you it in action. To give you some idea of how to use each weapon. Because there is some cool ways of dealing with enemies in the Mistlands. So this is all gear that you can get from either the planes or before. And everything is fully upgraded. Which is totally achievable before going to the Mistlands. I'm not going to cover recipes. Because I'm going to assume you know how to craft this stuff. But if not, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer it. And maybe we'll make a video too. So first up, we've got the Black Metal Shield. This is so we can parry enemies. The Draugr Fang Bow, which is just our best bow we can get before the Mistlands. But also, it does deal poison damage, which is also good for enemies in the Mistlands. More on that later. The Black Metal Atka, we're using this for the spinning attack, which is really useful when dealing with ticks. The Sledgehammer, we're going to use because its slamming attack actually clips through walls. The Black Metal Sword, we're going to use... When we want to do parry attacks with the shield. The ooze bomb will cover more on that later. But it's AOE. And most enemies in the Mistlands take normal damage. From all of their elemental and status effects. Like poison. And we're going to use the black metal knife. Because of the high DPS. It's really useful. When attacking the smaller enemies that move quickly. Like I said. Most enemies in the Mistlands take normal damage from elemental types. And the frost arrows in particular. Seem to deal the most damage. The armor self-explanatory plus the wisp blight, which we already made a video of how to access that. So I'll leave a link in the description to that. And then we use tasty meads to restore stamina. As well as stamina potions to restore stamina. And the tasty meads can be used when the stamina potion is on cooldown. Because what tasty meads actually do is increase stamina regen temporarily just for a few seconds so you restore your stamina quickly instead of instantaneously during this period of a few seconds your health regen is reduced but it literally just lasts for seconds and so the stamina gain is worth it just to use whilst your stamina meat is on cooldown and we do that if we're ever in a situation where we don't have the stamina to run away health mead self-explanatory okay so now we're going to start heading into the dungeon but first we got a gain entry without dying so I'm going to focus on arrows as well as we're outside. Whilst I do this, I just want to remind you guys that if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for future content. I make tons of Valheim content on the channel, including tons of speedruns and challenges. Okay, so fighting in these hills, you're going to use a lot of stamina. So as you can see, these arrows are doing quite a lot of damage. And then you also get the poison AoE as well. Alright, let's head down. Oh, we've still got another one here that's climbing up. Oh, I've fallen! Yeah, luckily the max fall damage you can take is actually 100. So if you have more than 100 HP, you'll never die in that scenario. Sort of side tip. Oh my god, there's so many. Just gotta keep running and poisoning them with the ooze bombs. But anyway, already, even though this is not super simple getting access to this dungeon, we're still surviving pretty good.
All right, I should have approached that much carefully, but I'm obviously pretty confident with these fights, but I'd advise you guys to take it slower than that. Oh, there's a Yawl. This is a really good opportunity. So the Yawl has a weak spot right underneath it in its belly. If we add some uh, fire resistance, this would be a good moment to use that, but we don't. So we're just going to focus on uh, shooting it underneath. Oh, we're getting attacked by ticks now. So we're going to use this. So this has been absolute chaos. I did plan for this to go way smoother, but... We've been absolutely fine using all these weapons so far but i'm gonna explain the strats for each weapon whilst we're in the dungeon it'll be a bit slower paced than this hopefully okay here we go so we're gonna take this slow i'm gonna go around with the bow out i'm not gonna go for the areas that are closed yet i'm just gonna start with the open areas so that's where we're going to get ambushed from. You can see looking down. There's a seeker down there. Just died to one shot. By the way, all my skills are currently at 70 for the purposes of this video. Not 100. But it shouldn't make too much of a difference. If you guys want to see me do it with lower level, just leave a comment and I'll do it. All right, so we can tell from the antennas sticking out of this door that there's a seeker there. If we use a news bomb, the poison attack actually goes through the door. And we can see that the seeker's taking damage. Once the uh, poison is cleared, we can just throw another one. And there we go. Dead Seeker. Completely safe. I'm going to get my shield on before we go through this door. And my sword. Because now I'd like to show you... Parrying. So something else I can show you is how the AOE of the hammer goes through walls. Especially if they can't see you, you get a stealth attack as well. It also has a lot of knockback. It doesn't do a ton of damage. But particularly when they're at the other side of a wall or something, it's just free damage. Obviously, you can also use the demolisher for this. But this is just the same weapon type that you get. You know, pre miss lands. You will need the trader though. Side note, I love that we have new potions and stuff that appear in these chests. Okay, that's that side clear. Now I'm going to head down here. Alright, so I hear that an egg just hatched. So I'm getting my dagger out for that high DPS. So yeah, as you can see there, the dagger takes good care of those. The fast attack speed actually does really help for those little enemies. But we can see there's some eggs over here that haven't hatched. One thing we can do that's awesome is throw an ooze bomb on them. Oh, look how it just wrecks these little enemies. So if you want to play the eggs super safe, you can just throw eggs. You can just throw ooze bombs on top of every single pile of eggs. There we go melts them i remember you know ooze bombs you can get right from the swamp onwards i 
They're actually really easy to craft. See more eggs down there again, so we throw a use bomb again. Wait for the poison to clear. Alright, so we're kind of surrounded here, but... We're just patient. We can just keep using these bombs. Alright, now we could just keep using these bombs. As you can see, they're really powerful. But let's just fight this guy normally. So I'm going to try and parry him and then hit him with the sword. You'll see how powerful that attack is. Boom. Three hits. Easy peasy. Another ooze bomb. We can even work in the iron sledges. The iron sledge will break the walls, of course. That's another really cool thing you can do, by the way, is iron sledge through one of the wooden doors. And then, with a dagger, you can be fast enough to lunge at them like that. It's actually so cool. Let's try the dagger thing again. So epic. Oh. This guy's mad at me. Again, as you can see, all these weapons are extremely effective when used correctly. Whoa. Even if we're getting caught off guard, we're still absolutely melting stuff. We've even got a one star over there. Oh, unfortunately, I didn't get the stealth attack. I love this room type, by the way. But we can hit with one of these. What we should do in this scenario is try and get multiple damage types on the go at once. So then you stack in different status effects. The frost slowdown effect still comes in clutch as it does for the whole game. Oh, I'm going to restore some stamina real quick. Get this weapon on again because we've got some ticks here. We can showcase this attack again. Super clutch. I'm actually going to let him attach. Now look. Even if they manage to jump on you, with this weapon, you can get rid of them easy peasy. Change to it again. Spin attack again. Use bomb. Kills these enemies instantly again. More seekers. Use bomb. Sledge. Dagger. Alright, so lastly, I want to take on a soldier. Just to show you what it's like with uh, this item set instead of the ones in the last video. Alright. We're just going to spam most of the arrows. But also, get some of those ooze bombs in there. If we can, we're going to shoot it in the butt for the extra damage. Because it does have a weak spot back there. 
But as you can see, it's already at it's already at half HP. On oh, now, I've actually got a dwarf getting involved. This is kind of funny. And boom, it actually ended up dying from the poison there. So there we go. That was actually super easy. So yeah, this item set is officially my recommendation for what to use for conquering the Mistlands. Until, of course, you can build some with a really cool new gear. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it or you found the information useful, please don't forget to leave a like and a nice positive comment for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for future content. I do stream live on this very YouTube channel and also live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nickrawcliffe. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description to that. You can support the content and help keep the dream alive by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash nickrawcliffe. You can follow me on social media and join my Discord at the links below. And until next time, have a good one.